Let's take a look at our Tropical Storm Dante, also known as Choi Wan internationally. Remember, there's two names on these storm systems because uh, JMA is the World Meteorological Organization of the Philippines names their own storms. Uh, only country in the world to do that. Anyways, east coast of Mindanao is right there. We have plow right here, kind of give you your bearings as to where this storm is at this time. Convection continuing to flare up in that center of circulation. So we are seeing some intensification. Winds right now being rated at 65, gusting to 83 kilometers per hour. So it's a tropical storm moving west at about 10 kilometers per hour. And you kind of get a really closer view with microwave imagery here. I like this because it almost looks like radar, right? Well, satellite peering through those upper level cirrus clouds. You can see that convection in the southern periphery, but we don't quite have an eye just yet. So it's still on the low end of the tropical storm scale. But I'm sure if you're in Mindanao or Southern Visayas, you don't really care as far as what the rating is because it's getting rain right now and you're getting plenty of it. All right, so question is, where is the storm gonna go? Here's a look at the bigger picture. And I wanna show this to you, give you an idea of the, just the general dynamics because as meteorologists, you wanna look at the, the general overview here, high pressure, there's our rainy season front, and then we have Dante, also known as Choi Wan, right? All right, it's gonna be pulling towards the north, likely being ushered in by that southwest monsoon. But then we have a low pressure area south of Guam. I'm keeping an eye on this because if this spins up enough and pulls towards the north, we're gonna have is the Fujiwara effect. Sounds fancy. Basically, it's when two low pressure areas get close to each other, they must gravitate towards each other or they pinwheel around each other, which if this happens, this would pull Dante away from the coast. And when you get a Fujiwara effect, even just kind of in the picture, it makes the forecast that much harder. So here we go, pulling this towards the north and you see it kind of pinwheel back according to the Bagasa forecast. Same with JTWC, they have an intensifying, become a tropical storm, maybe even a typhoon off the east coast of Luzon and then pinwheeling back thanks to that effect just off the east coast here. This makes things complicated. Remember that because here's a look at the GFS guidance. Some of that actually pulls it closer to the coast while the ECMWF multiple, the, the uh, spaghetti plots here, this is the ensembles, keeps most of it just off of the Eastern seaboard. So I'm gonna go with the ECMWF because I think that's more confident. And you can see here on Monday, let's look over towards Tuesday. Heading into Wednesday, their storm just stays just off the East Coast, but boy, it's gonna bring increased rainfall in Eastern Mindanao and Eastern Visayas, maybe even Southeast Luzon. I know this model particularly doesn't show it, but regardless, this is the other thing. This is gonna to pull towards the north, out towards the Southern Japanese islands, get hooked up with the rainy season front eventually. Okinawa, Taiwan, Southeast China, pff, rain in the forecast. It's just gonna be wet. Not a typhoon, just wet. That's unpleasant but look at the west coast of the philippines yeah that's that increase in precipitation once this moves towards the north from that increase in the southwesterly winds with the monsoon that's going to be bringing heavy showers maybe back off those temperatures a little bit i know it's been hot i know it's been hot maybe it might cool things down question still in the track though regardless plenty of increase in the rainfall <sighs> the Philippine Sea can surprise us. That's one of the main points. I sneaked that in here lately. The Philippine Sea is so warm. It's the models, since we don't have hurricane hunters and sufficient buoys off of the east coast of the Philippines to give us sea surface temperatures and just local weather information to help initiate the models. Um, it... The, a lot of the guidance, especially global models, struggles to keep up with these storms. It's tough. Speaking of uh, models and guidance and stuff like that, if you guys want to help me out on Patreon, please, 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 I would appreciate it so much. I had somebody who just who uh, uh, donated yesterday, Tracy. Thank you very much. It became a super typhoon, which is ten dollars a month, or a typhoon's a five, and you know we even got a two dollar a month option if you find these videos useful. You can check it out. I'm not saying you have to do it to keep watching these videos. I continue to provide these videos for free. But um, it, it is appreciated. And all this equipment is not cheap, and especially with those new graphics, I'm going to be coming in pretty soon. I was just showing you there. So excited for that. What I'm not excited for is that threat of flooding. So key thing as always, is stay safe out there. If you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up on any of the social media platforms as well.